up over there. I promised Philip I'd go out. Besides, the wind's not up yet. But I thought you wanted to meet this young lady from New York. The last thing we need is some college girl with journalistic ambition poking her nose into our lives. She's an assistant book editor, and she's going to help me publish my memoirs. If I find her underfoot, I'll send her back. I don't want this whole thing, this diamond jubilee tribute, to be less than my father's heritage has earned. Well, I know how important this ball is to you, and nothing's going to interfere. Mm -mm. By the way, Philip's all wound up over his new hull design. You no, know, I wish he and Jason would behave more like brothers. America was built on the adversaries. <laughs> Be careful. Huh? Nothing. Nice little afternoon stroll on the blocks. 
Shut up. What's the matter? Are you afraid of heights? Shut up, damn it! Jason! That's enough. I never could understand him. at the airport. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Uh, Mr. Drake wouldn't have it any other way. Mrs. Drake already called twice. Call the mayor for complain about the traffic. Okay. All right. It's going to be good for a laugh. Now, we scrutinize your work history at the publishing house very carefully, Mr. Sherman. I'm confident you'll have an enlightening experience helping Mrs. Drake to write her family history. I certainly hope so. both houses on their toes. I don't understand. There's two houses? About 20 acres of ground. Well, does Mr. Drake use both houses? No. He and Mr. Drake live in the one they call the Billows. It's the sun on the leeward side of the point. Her son Jason and his family live there also. Who lives in the other house? At North Point. Philip and his family. Oh, oh, that's the other son. That's right, the adopted one. But I'm sure you already checked all that out in the Seattle Social Register. Hey, I'll tell you, I can't wait until I see you.
Is it? How many rooms are there? Forty-two at last count. <laughs> oh, it's almost like... Like another world. More ways than one. I expected you an hour ago. Don't start with me, David. It was my idea. I hadn't seen the Coast Highway north of Seattle. I hope Mrs. Drake's not upset. Miss Victor, I'm Davis. How do you do? Won't you please come in? Put her things in the carriage house. Now. Tell Mrs. Drake you're here. Yes, I'm uh, Jason Drake. And uh, you must be Miss Victor. Right. Please call me Shalane. Shalane. Jason. Well, I didn't realize you were British. Oh, no. No, we're uh, Americans. Just uh, two years at school over there, I guess. Oh. Oh, your house is more than I had imagined. Mrs. Drake is expecting me. Oh, yes, yes. But uh, she'd be in her sewing room now and wouldn't want to be disturbed. So, uh, oh, why don't I show you to your quarters and then and you can meet her at dinner. the office a while ago. Secretary said that you had left. Left early. Uh, Nicholas Banda, this is Shalane Victor, grandmother's new secretary. How do you do? Hi. My son and daughter. Hi. Hi. I see. Uh, already got yourself a fan club. Huh. Banda, please. The carriage house is this way. Hey, Tito!
Mrs. Drake. I'm Shalane and Victor. Excuse me for staring, but you're a very beautiful young lady. <laughs> Thank you. And this is my granddaughter, Noel. Hello. How do you do? You must be Nicholas's other sister. No, Philip is my father. Miss Victor, would you and Noel go ahead? We'll be right along. I'll show you the way. You're right. The resemblance is uncanny. Yes. It is. something we could do, if I could be of some help to her. Margaret's in good hands. She and my daughter have a special relationship. Oh, you're Noelle's mother. I'm sorry, I'm Jessica Drake. Felt smart. You're Shalane Victor? Yeah. Well, isn't there anything we can do? Well, uh, we could have ourselves a little drink. I know what I'm doing on the water. That boat handles just fine. Who cares about the damn boat? Grandfather's dead. It was an accident, Cody. An unnecessary accident. Jason, let me explain. Uh -oh. I'll kill you. 
What are you writing? Your pen was scratching the paper. Oh, I was just writing a condolence note to your grandmother. How was she? Grandmother and I had a long talk. She's a strong woman. Yeah. I'm sure she is. You and I should talk sometime. Oh, I would like that very much. You seem so... so bright. I wouldn't want you to become like the others. The others? The women. The other women here. No, no. Darling. You must be exhausted. I'm sorry, Mother. We could all use some rest. I'll take you home. Did I talk? To both of you. We'll do it again. Finish. Good night. tough on you, another accident like this. We're a strong family. It seems like yesterday you lost your wife. Your brother called that a freak accident, too. That's none of your damn business. Thank you for coming. I got your note, and thank you for your thought. Mrs. Drake, this must be a terrible time for you. Perhaps it would be better if we started my employment in a month or two. Oh, nonsense. You're a very lovely young woman with an intelligence that I can respect. Besides, it's going to be a very busy two weeks. You're not going ahead with the Diamond Jubilee, are you? Indeed, I am, Jessica exactly what Alexander would have wanted. But so soon. The company's 75th anniversary ball is something that my husband had planned for years as a testimonial to his father. And I am not going to disappoint him. It looks like you're going to be busy. I'm willing to help Mrs. Drake with anything she needs. You don't like her, do you? Whatever gave you that idea? It's a beautiful service. Too bad my father wasn't here to enjoy it. Hmm. Well, can I get you some coffee? Uh, Miss Victor, she wait. 
I'm sorry. I, I'm just not very good at these things. Is anyone? I suppose not. Here. I just find it hard to, to celebrate his death. Quite a turnout for the old boy, wasn't it? Of course, he had a lot of friends. Not if any of them or any of us will be the same now. Mother will have her appropriately dignified period of mourning and life will simply go on, as it always has. Aren't you being a little callous, businesslike, like father? It's a lesson he would have liked you to have learned. I think we should talk now. Really? Perhaps I should excuse myself. Oh, no, 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 no. If you're going to help mother with a book, you really ought to know the truth about her son. And the truth is, you're on your way out, Jason. Drake Shipyards has a brilliant future ahead of it without you. Don't bet on it. We're ripe for going public. All we have to do is push a little paper around. We'll clear hundreds of millions. Philip, for once and for all, we are not going public. We can hear you all the way across the room. Maybe you can talk some sense into your uncle. He'd like to go back to building Noah's Ark. I'm not so sure Grandfather was all in favor of this high-tech stuff either. Ever since Yvette's death, you've done your best to turn this whole family against me, haven't you? Even my own sons come under your spell. <laughs> so, uh, so, let's step over here while I, I poison your mind. Will Jason be in your book? He has some very interesting stories to tell. Elizabeth. Jason's wife. She was murdered. Mr. Forbes and I have reviewed the contents of Alexander's will, and we both agree the sooner we face the realities of life, the easier they will be to bear. I am glad to say that uh, Davis and Mills, the rest of the household staff, are generously provided for. Now, to my grandchildren, Nicholas, Vanda, Cody, and Noel, trust to provide for their education and the greatest request of all, the freedom to choose their own lives. Big deal. The task of passing on the leadership of Drake Shipyard is a more difficult one than my father faced, for I was his only son. But I have been doubly blessed. First for my natural child, Jason, then for my adopted son, Philip. There is no doubt that Philip is more daring, but he is reckless. There is no doubt that Jason is more perceptive, but he is a romantic. Until my sons come to the middle ground of their traits, neither shall inherit my company. Therefore, my wife Margaret will assume the position of chairman of the board. I am sure I can count on your support. count on a battle, that's what you can count on. You and Jason set this whole thing up, didn't you? Oh, you know that's not true. What's your first official act as head of the company, Mother? Installing the favored son as chief operating officer? When will you learn that I do not play favorites? Really? Who lives here in this house with you? That is simply because Yvette preferred to live in the family home while you and Jessica wanted your own independence now, don't you remember? And now we're paying for it, aren't we? It's the time to discuss this is tomorrow morning at the office. That chairmanship and this 
whole company are rightfully mine. And I won't rest until I have it. All of it! Father eat oh, he's already down at the shipyard by now. Grandfather Garney's really got his hands full. Of course. I suppose he would. Especially after last night. Sounds like Uncle Philip means business, doesn't it? He's bitter, wouldn't you be? That's not the way we're supposed to talk about one another in this family. Good morning, Grandma. Good, Good morning. morning, Grandma. Oh, and Mr. Victor, I hope you're finding your quarters comfortable. Oh, they're very nice, but somehow I feel I'm just in the way. Oh, nonsense. You and I are going to have our hands full with the Diamond Jubilee. In the meantime, if I'm going to help you with your writing, I wonder if there isn't some reading I might do, some background on the family. Plenty of it in the library, and then if there's anything personal you want to know, you can just get it from each of us. Just ask questions, all right? I'm sure Philip and Jessica will love that. I don't care what they like. If you need anything, just ask. Very well, Mrs. Drake, I will. Got that marketing analysis I've got to do for Dad. You know, sometimes I think I'd rather be a welder in the yard. Excuse me, please. Sometimes I think my grandsons have got the wrong father. Having children is no guarantee they'll be like you, is it? <laughs> Indeed, it is. Tell me about Noel. What do you want to know? There's something about her. Has she always been blind? No. There was an accident. It terrified her so that... The doctors say it's psychosomatic. Hey, there's no oil. Oh, on our way to see grandmother, no doubt. You know, she really gives me the creep. She's just lonely. I'm gonna help her in the house. Oh, and since when are you the good Samaritan? Go out, wait. You need some help? No. I'd like you to walk with me. Okay. It's not often that you and I have a chance to talk. Well, how could we? You spend all your time with Grandmother up in the sewing room. The truth is, you and I have more in common than anyone else in the family realizes. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? Maybe we should talk about your anger sometime, Nick. What are you talking about, Noel? Sometimes I'm angry, too. I know what that's like. I know about the nightmares. I know about your nightmares. You don't know about anything. Enterprises of which Drake Shipping will remain a vital adjunct. Yes, that's all it'll be, Philip. Uh, an appendage. That's that's not what we're here for. Aren't you carrying this legacy business a bit far? Look, I've got a Coast Guard admiral waiting. We uh we still have a business to run. Let him wait. He can't buy more than two ships every five years. I'm talking about the recreational boating industry. It's huge. We're not part of it. This company will become an anachronism. We're going to run this company as father wanted it run. If you don't like that, resign. 
All right. I'll resign. I'll resign when you face the truth about Yvette's death. and your mother out against somebody else. I'll take what I want. Right now. I want you. I can't stop you, but I'm not going to help you. Sure look good on a horse, Banda. What ten years of riding lessons would do? Oh, thanks. How about giving me some pointers? soaking wet? Whoa, wait a minute, Nicholas. We were just fooling around. Oh, you just fooling around with my sister, huh? Your own cousin? Nick, don't make a big deal out of it. You want me to tell grandmother who you fooling around with? But that's all it was. It was just fun. Pretty impressive, isn't it? it? Certainly is. You must love it up here. Living under the thumb of Margaret Drake is an all it's to be. In what way? You really are full of questions, aren't you? I'm sorry. It's just that Mrs. Drake suggested I talk to everyone for my work on her memoirs. It's as if she thinks I might find out something even she doesn't know. Oh, really? Well, everything here is an open book. Uh, if I can help you in any way. Well, tell me about Jason and Phyllis. Well, they're just competitive. Well, it seems like more than that. Ever since his wife died, Jason has changed. What was she like? A bit? A lot like you. Mm -hmm. It was an accident. 
She fell off the bluff. They were all in a picnic. Jason, Philip, Noel, Cody. They were all there. You weren't there? No. I'd taken Banda to Seattle on a shopping trip. And that just slipped? Coroner described it as a death leap. Suicide? Certainly left its mark on Jason. You must miss her very much. Oh, Jessica was just filling me in on some family history. Oh, God, uh, Jessica, you'll probably be wanting to take Noel home. I'm terribly sorry we didn't realize how late it was. Will I see you tomorrow, Grandma? No, I hope so, dear. She was just telling me about Jason's wife. Oh, well, if you want to know anything, why don't you ask Jason? Would he tell me about her death? Weren't Jessica's details lurid enough for you? Well, it's just that she wasn't even there. Jessica said that. Yeah. She said she was in Seattle with Banda when Yvette committed suicide. Suicide? She did not commit suicide. Yes, of course you did. Pretty dumb, huh? Boy, I'll say. Why don't you try putting ice on it? It's a good idea. Excuse me. If you will excuse me, I have a slight headache. Now, the brand is on me. If you'll fill me in on the plans for the Diamond Jubilee. Well, it's going to be truly formal. With a guest list that includes everyone I've ever heard of, from awesome. show business personalities to the Rockefellers. <laughs> well, my parents always did enjoy a wide circle of friends. Uh, you don't seem to think much of the society crowd. Let's just say I prefer smaller groups. Thank you. Well, to the Drake Family Diamond Jubilee. Smaller groups. You do have an amazing family, you know. Ah, uh, now you've been listening to rumors. Or to my mother. I think Noelle already fills the role of listener for your mother. I suppose that's a good thing now. Uh, now my father's gone. He was a great man, wasn't he? It's not going to be easy to fill his shoes. If you can't control your son, I'll do it for you. Now what are you talking about? You don't even know, do you? 
He attacked Cody this afternoon. Attacked? Now, why would he do that? That's a damn good question. You better get some professional help for that son of yours. I don't think he's ever gotten over... It's got nothing to do with this. Don't bet on it. I think the pressure is getting to him. All right, I'll... I'll talk to Nick. By that? Shalene, there, there are some things you're, you're better off not knowing. years as strong as ever. It looks just like the Zillow. Exactly the same house. Same floor plan, everything. But why? Sean Drake, that was Alexander's father, built his home here because he loved the white cats on this side of the point. Salt air is pretty rough on the landscape, though, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> yes, I had noticed. That's hardly a reason to build another house. Well, Margaret had an accident. Alexander never went in the old house again. What kind of accident? Some say she fell down a flight of stairs. Others think she was pushed. She's been on medication ever since. So Alexander built an exact replica of the house down at the Billows. Never set foot in North Point again after that. go to meet the kitchen staff about some menu details. Do you need my help? No, you just uh, enjoy the day. Good morning, Grandmother. Morning, Banda. You are going to wear out those horses. They're not complaining. Good morning. Hi. You must be a good rider. Oh, I nearly made it through the Olympic trials. Oh, then you really are a competitor. I used to be. Got other things to do lately, though. Well, the Olympics seem fairly significant. As significant as men? I doubt it. Hey. No, Vanda. If you put two young men against each other, one of them is liable to get hurt. Oh, you heard about the fight between Nick and Cody. That was no fight. Nick just flipped out. He hardly seems the type to have a temper. Sometimes he just loses control. 
Has he always been that way? No. Since our mother died. Your mother's death must have been very hard on you. I was in France competing on the American dressage team. Oh? And Jessica was with you? Are you kidding? She hates horses. Just like my father. You don't seem anything like your father. Yeah? Everybody says I take after my mother. She was European. French. <laughs> Just imagine her. A free spirit. Her refusal to heed anybody else's warnings. Warnings? You're on the bluff that day. She wanted to pick wildflowers right at the edge. Everybody warned her against it. She went out there anyway. And that's when she fell? Yes. At least that's what I remember my dad telling me. Oh, look, I gotta go. I'm already late. Well, I'd love to hear more about your mother someday. I'm not so sure you would. we get a chance to talk. All right. I can show you the grounds at the same time. This is the Rose Garden. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> You're testing me and I'm failing. I don't enjoy being patronized. Maybe blind, but I do know the difference between the drab and the ordinary. You're patronizing me, and you know much more than that. I know that you really want to know about Jason. You see much more than any of us, don't you? He's a very attractive man. And he'd have to be to have won Yvette. From what I gather, that was the favor of everyone around here. She was to everyone but my mother. That's probably because my father was once in love with Yvette. So, a little jealousy is understandable, I suppose. It's too bad. Jealousy is such a destructive emotion. You know about emotions just like Yvette. like her. What's wrong? Feel like her. Like, like Yvette. Mademoiselle Chalet. Yes. Well, I knew right along I didn't know where it was, so I offered to bring him over, and uh, here we are. So, why don't the two of you just come in? Never did. You know, I, I told him he should have phoned for just dropping in like this. No, oh, it wouldn't have done any good. You see, I have everything in here but a phone. Yeah, well, this carriage house hasn't been lived in since... Guess we forgot to put one in. Thank you. Noel tells me you were talking to her today. Oh, yes. We had a lovely chat. She also tells me she likes you a lot. <laughs> mm. 
she was telling me about your wife and how lovely she was. Yes, she was. Lovely. I loved her very much. Jason, do you mind if I ask if you were with her when she had the accident? Yes, I, I was with her. We'd been out on the bluff having a picnic. Want to hear? Tell me if you want to tell me. Sure. There's nothing to hide. As I said, we threw out on the bluff. We've been there most of the afternoon. Just you and the No, 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 Nick. Cody were there, and my bandit was in France at the time. Philip and Philip and Jessica were there. We just finished lunch. Philip and I were talking. Noel and Yvette were picking wildflowers. Mother was in the house. Father came out to join us with some strawberry ice cream he just made. When, when we. When we heard a horrifying scream. He better. Well, she she'd slipped over the bluffs. But I, I managed to get hold of her wrist. I I was but I'm sure I could pull her up. I didn't realize it at first, but she she must have hit her head when she slipped. She was she was struggling, trying, but she was trying to get her foothold. Sheer dead weight. I was, I was holding on with everything I had still. So it, it, it wasn't enough. Then she fell. Death. Really? After all this time? I'm a stranger. Maybe it's easier for him to open up to me. What did he tell you? About the accident. How he tried to save her and failed. He said that? Yes. That she slipped from his grasp. He got plenty of guilt, all right, but it's not because he ever tried to save anyone. I don't understand. What did happen? Mother wasn't feeling well that day. She stayed in bed. The rest of the family was having a picnic on the bluff out by the point. My father was there. Jessica and I were watching Noel working on a drawing. She'd been quite the artist until that day. It was a kind of an outing that families dream of, I suppose. Jason was playing some silly game, 
teasing Yvette with a handful of wildflowers. The rest of us were just finishing lunch. We didn't see Jason leading her closer to the edge. He was making a game of it. Dangerous game. Just then I realized how close they were to the edge. Suddenly she reached for the flowers in his hand and the ground beneath her feet began to give way. Jason was right there. All he had to do was reach out and grab her. But he just stood there and let her fall. He could easily have saved her. I never know why he did that. It's a shame that Jason practically murdered her then. Am I? Jessica said that Yvette committed suicide, that she jumped. Why would she lie about that? Shalane, what I'm telling you is the truth. Jessica, my mother, God knows what lies they'll tell to protect the Drake family name. What about Noel? My mother said there was an accident. The accident that blinded my Noel was witnessing Yvette's death. I hear Shalane's asking a lot of questions. Oh, it's only part of her job. How else do you think she can make any meaningful contribution to our family memoirs, hmm? That doesn't make any more sense than hosting this diamond jubilee. This celebration meant a lot to your father. It's what he wanted. He dreamt of it for years. Mother, father is dead. Then it's his spirit we'll be honoring. Don't you think we're already honoring enough spirits in this house? I might find you cooped up in there. <laughs> I was just going over some of Mrs. Drake's notes and comparing them to mine. You should be thinking about what you're going to wear to the Diamond Jubilee. Oh, I haven't had time to worry about it. You know, I may have just a thing for you. Yeah, come with me. Okay. Jessica, should we be up here? Don't worry, we're all family. Besides, Margaret's sewing room is the only thing strictly off limits. <laughs> the sewing is anything like mine. I don't blame her. Well, what's so secretive about a dressmaking hobby? She's hardly the seamstress type. Well, what does she do in there? I couldn't tell you. Only Margaret and Noelle ever go in there, and Noelle's not talking. You can take your pick. Formal gowns are over here. Oh. My closets at North Point are overflowing, so I just store a few things here. These are lovely. You have exquisite taste. I think I can find something you'll like. It's all right. Don't be silly. I'll have it cleaned and brought to you at the carriage house. Been to bed. You'll definitely make a lasting impression in this. simply showing Shalane the rest of the house. This is my home. You don't conduct tours here. We were just looking at the dressing room. If you want to see anything, ask me. Not her. Don't worry. 
We didn't go near your precious little sewing room. I'm sorry, Mrs. Drake. I didn't mean to cry. She's so upset. Don't pretend you don't know about her. Know what? You've seen the pills she takes. Mill said it was medication. The result of her accident. I gather she'd been taking them ever since she fell down the stairs. Wrong. They're what psychiatrists euphemistically refer to as mood enhancers. She's seen a psychiatrist? Several. She happens to be a clinically diagnosed paranoid. Noel, what are you doing out here by yourself? Nicholas? Do you know how dangerous it is out here? I often come here to, to listen. <laughs> no, there's nothing to listen to out here. Foghorn. It's not true. Listen, Nicholas. The wind is changing direction. I can feel the white cats lifting off the water down there. You're in pain, aren't you? Well, I was thinking about Grandfather. So. No, you weren't. Nightmares haven't stopped, have they? <laughs> you know, are you crazy? Maybe I can help you. Meet me here tomorrow at sunset. Why should I trust you, Noah? You want the answers, don't you? Jessica can be very competitive. Then I don't really have anything to compete for. Oh, uh, just be careful. Oh, she can be very charming. When she has a motive. And I think it would be wise to leave Jason to himself. Why are you telling me this? Because I don't think he's quite ready for uh, a new relationship. What makes you think that I... Because he visited you in the carriage house. Nothing here escapes your attention, does it? Particularly when it concerns my son. And I do hope you understand. Mrs. Drake, I don't mean to be a distraction. I'm only here to do my job. It broke my heart when Jason's wife died. She must have been a very special person. Yes, she was. She was. And I believe you can be too, Shalane. In time. Yes. I believe you have something of mine. I have something of yours. Ah, uh, yes. One wayward bottle of wine, as I recall. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're busy. Oh, no, no. It's all right. Don't... Don't go. Anything I can share? No. I'm ready for a critical eye just yet. My eyes are hardly critical. Well, I only hope your mother agrees with you. Oh, she likes you. A lot. Really? If you last another week, you'll break the record. <laughs> oh, 
I'm not joking. She was pretty good at sizing up people. Well, maybe she could give me a few pointers. I don't seem to be judging anybody very accurately. I'm not that difficult to decipher. I'm not sure. Then maybe you should stop listening to what you hear and stop believing what you see. All right. I see an intelligent, compassionate man. Someone who's very sure of himself. Is that who you are, Jason? And a man who like very much to be your escort at the ball Saturday night. You're asking me for a date? You refuse me? A dream. It, it was more real than a dream. I, I had sight. I, I saw. Tell me, what did you see? The, the bluffs. I saw the bluffs. My parents were there. Cody, Nicholas, Uncle Jason, and Yvette. Then Grandfather came up to me. Alexander. said he was sorry for keeping the truth from you all these years. What truth? About Yvette's death. I, I wanted him to hold me, to, to touch me. He went away. The dream went away. I, I could see. What does your father think you are, anyway? Hey, hey. You want to call him and find out? It's very funny. What do you have, some kind of death wish or something? Come on, it's late. You better go. But I thought you liked me. I do like you. So, why don't you want to make love to me? It's not a good night, Panda. You know, Grandfather's will didn't change anything. You're still just tired of help around here. Well, next time, bring money.
know. I'm asking you, where have you been? In bed. With milk. Amanda, why? What are you doing here, sir? Sleeping around like a common whore. Oh, is that what you call Shalane in the carriage house? She seems perfect for you, Dad. Don't fight it. I want you to go back, Nicholas. Back to the beginning. Erase every other memory from your mind. No other thought. No other. Just relax and focus. Breathing in, breathing out. Everything else goes away. Everything else is gone. Go back to the day you were born. Your heart is beating. You can hear the rush of the water. Your mother's water. It's nice. It's real. Safe. Life. I can see the light. I have to get to the light. I can't breathe. The pressure. Take it. Ah. I can't breathe. Wait. Wait, I wasn't alone. No, I wasn't alone. We were together. Get him! You gotta help him out. He can't breathe. We were together. Right. You had a twin, identical twin. No, he's just like me. And I left him. He died. I killed him. No, he died. He was born dead. No, I killed him! I got killed everyone I love. No, you didn't kill him. No more than you killed your... God, Nicholas... Did you kill your mother? Nicholas, tell me about your mother. No, mother! Mother! No, now don't go so close. Please, it's not safe. I'll get the flowers someplace else. Let's just go back to the picnic. Nicholas. Nicholas, wake up. Listen to me. Your mother's not here. Mother, don't. Please. Mother, it's not safe. The edge. No! No! I didn't want her to die. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't. I
lock my door at two in the morning to lock. Very kinky, Jesse. I need a favor. Let it wait. Next Saturday, just before the Diamond Jubilee at the Bellas, I want you to help me. That lobster tray well too. How did the dill sauce turn out? Hey, man, in peace. After I had you add a dash of lemon, of course. <laughs> Monsieur, please, don't overcook the souffle at chocolate tonight. Master, the mom is using these. She's out on the dance floor somewhere with Nick. Everyone we know is here tonight, so we are going to show to the world a united front. Yeah, you see, it is a charade. And where's the rest of tonight's cast? Oh, well, Jessica, have you, have you seen Shalane? She'll be along. I think she wants to make the proper impression on you. Gabrielle, how are you, darling? And when will Father's portrait be unveiled? Later. The orchestra will give us our cue. You don't belong to the shipyard at all, dear. You belong on the stage. We 
drinking? Orange juice, that's right. I haven't seen it. Look, Cody, I was really hoping we would get a chance to talk before tonight. Well, I've been uh, keeping pretty busy down at the shipyard. That's what I hear. You must really like it. That's what being a member of the Drake family is all about, isn't it? Shipbuilding. They look on it as something of a birthright, don't you? Oh. <laughs> Even though I'm adopted like my father, you mean? Uh-huh. I'm surprised you don't look at it that way. I guess I could just never get that excited about something that wasn't my idea in the first place. Mm -hmm. Too much legacy for you? Among other things. Cody, I want to apologize about what happened out the stables. I don't know what got into me. Ben and I weren't doing anything in that one. Yeah. And she's your blood. Not mine. Well, the point is, she's old enough to take care of herself. And I am sorry. You pack a hell of a wallop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> father thought enough of Mills to include him in his will, then I think he's entitled to our hospitality tonight. Don't you? Panda certainly seems to think so. Why do we always feel like such a stranger in this house? Be patient. The night is young. What's that supposed to mean? You'll see. You look like you could use some fresh air. I wonder when I get that around here. You look great. That's suggesting that we cut out on the social event of the season, are you? You're damn right I am. Hang in there a bit. Just want to show off this rented cox a little. <laughs> I'm sure you all know the story of my father, Alexander, and uh, his father, Sean. Two daring men whose boldness and vision made Drake Shipyards what it is today. And tonight I'd like to give you this assurance that my brother and I intend to carry on their business in that same tradition. Thank you. Your presence here tonight does honor to me to my mother, my brother, and indeed to our entire family. And so now, I have great pleasure in presenting to you, in lasting tribute to my father's memory, the unveiling of this portrait that from now on will hang in the boardroom at Drake Shipyard. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Drake. Suzette. You owe me a Rolls Royce for this one, sweetheart. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? I didn't know. I didn't you know. Stay with me. Davis, please uh, take that up into the attic where it belongs. At once, madam. Mother, wait. Drake. Sorry, please let me explain. Jason, how could I have known how much I look like your wife? And Jessica gave me this dress. That's where she forced you to wear it, too. No! But how could I have known? And that hairdo, uh, another coincidence? Oh, Jason, you've got to believe me. I'd never do anything to hurt you. I've got to talk to her. No. 
Margaret. I heard her voice. Although that's not possible. <laughs> there is a bed in there. This week with David Brinkley, fighting America's drug epidemic. From testing the workforce to enforcing our borders, problems and solutions. Tomorrow night, a courageous young blind man tries to prove the value of the first seeing eye dogs in Love Leads the Way, the Disney Sunday movie. Then Roger Moore is James Bond as he falls for a beautiful Russian agent who vows to kill him in The Spy Who Loved Me, the ABC Sunday night movie. Watch the Weekend Report tonight on most of these ABC stations.